everybody, welcome back to Bee Mother Reviews. Today on the table we've got Poison Ivy from XM Studios. Now, um, she's a fan favorite character from the Batman universe. Um, she's actually been around quite a long time. She made her debut way back in the 1960s. And, but the Poison Ivy that we kind of know today was uh, introduced in the late 80s when her origin was revised uh, post-crisis, let's call it. Um, she is, was a botanist. Her name is Pamela Isley. And, and get ready for this. In an experiment gone wrong, she obtained her plant-based abilities. She can telepathically control the plants around her. She can create these pheromones um, kind of around her uh, that allows her to mind control people, especially men around her. And she can also create poisons and she often will secrete them through her lips. So she's really got a kiss of death ability. Um, so as I said, she's been around uh, quite a long time. She really is a fan favorite among people. Um, she's been a villain, uh, one of Batman's villains. Uh, but these days uh, in the New 52 and, and the Rebirth era, she's, she's almost more of an anti-hero. Um, she's got an ongoing relationship with Harley Quinn, actually. Uh, they're off and on, but... Um, you know, all that said, I don't really give a crap about Poison Ivy as a character. I would never buy a regular Poison Ivy statue. Um, but as you can see, this is not your regular Poison Ivy statue. This is part of XM Studios' um, sort of unique samurai-themed Batman line. And you can see she's got all kinds of Japanese cultural elements sort of infused throughout this piece. And that's what really caught my eye. Um, so let's get in the review and find out um, what made me really decide to buy this piece. And let's talk about why you might like to buy this piece. So XM Studios, Poison Ivy, let's get in the review. All right, so as I said off the top, is really the Japanese elements of this statue that, that caught my eye the most. And so let's run through some of those. Um, you got the cherry blossoms on the tree. I mean, springtime in Japan, that's just such an iconic image. You've probably seen photos um, from around Japan, just pink everywhere you look. So that's really, really an iconic thing there. Uh, of course, she's got the geisha portrait here uh, with that traditional hair up style. Uh, but this time it's, it's red, obviously, given there that signature poison ivy look. Um, uh, also, the kimono is re very, very nice. And when I was in Tokyo earlier this year, uh, we went to the Meiji Shrine, and we were very lucky to see a traditional wedding party um, going through the courtyard of the of the shrine. And and so I got a look at the at the bride's kimono, and I'll show you a picture uh, here. But you really got to see that real intricate embroidery, the floral patterns across her kimono, and also her shoes. She had these, you know, the very traditional wooden sandals with the socks on and so you can see those elements here on, on this statue the nice embroidered pattern in her kimono uh, they've obviously shortened it up quite a bit to uh, boost the sex appeal of the statue i mean it wouldn't be poison ivy with a little bit of that without a little bit of that uh, and you know the socks and the sandals very very japanese uh, look there you got the fan of course which is also very asian and i just I love the, uh, the Japanese part of the design, but um, let's also look at what makes this poison ivy in general. You can see the, the vines of the plants all around the base, and you can see them wrapping around the tree, and then around the, this um, concrete post here. And if, when you look closely at it here, you can see that the, the column of this um, thing here is, is snapped. And so that really gives you a sense of how powerful these plants are under her control. So real nice sense of power. The vines really give you this almost sense of movement, like snakes moving along the ground. You got sort of these snapdragon heads um, there, and and very, it's you know they've really done a nice job of blending the traditional poison ivy with those Japanese elements. And uh, the piece was sculpted by Martin Augusta from XM. He's been doing a lot of their pieces. He did their Wolverine way back in the day. Mysterio, you can see behind me, he did that. He's done Poison Ivy. He's doing Dark Phoenix. 
Um, so he's done, uh, and also their Wonder Woman, the 1-6 Wonder Woman coming up. So he does a lot of their female pieces now, and he, he just killed this piece. I mean, it's just details everywhere you look on it. Absolutely a fantastic statue. Uh, this one was, was co-designed by HMO, similar to the Samurai Batman was. And when, it, when I heard that, when I read that, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Because they really put a lot of research into their pieces. And so same thing here. Um, so I got a look at the original concept design, uh, thanks to Safara from HMO, who, who uh, sent that over to me. And, you know, pretty much it's, it's identical to the original concept. There's a few things missing from that. Um, on the fan, there was going to be some blades on the end of the fan. And there was going to be a little Tanto knife uh, in her belt on the, on the, behind her back. And that would have been kind of cool. Uh, but who knows why those were removed. It could have been, you know, design changes. It could have been license earth uh, issues. Uh, it still looks great without those things. Uh, the hair pins in her hair, uh, those were um, intended to be like weapons, like blades, so she could pull them out and throw them or, or use them in hand-to-hand -hand combat if she needed to. So I love the design on this statue. I love the sculpt on this statue. That's really what drew me to it. Um, absolutely fantastic. Right, we'll talk a little bit about paint on this piece and you know this statue made its debut at the Singapore Comic Con last year uh, so that was last fall and I happened to be there at the time and I remember when this thing got set up uh, for the first time I mean everyone who was there I mean their jaw just kind of dropped like holy cow this thing is special like, you could just tell uh, but on that piece that they had on that at that show uh, the paint on the base was a little bit different. The, the vines especially were a bit of a lighter color, almost a greeny color, and whereas these are more of a brown. Uh, the moss, like the little green spots on the vines, um, were a little more subtle uh, than they are here. Um, but that's not to say this one looks bad. It's just, uh, you know, it's a little bit different than what was shown there. Um, I, I kind of like what was shown originally better, but you know, this is still okay. Um, Poisoning Ivy herself, she looks fantastic. I mean, the skin tones are great. The, the paint apps are just very clean. Nice, um, nice paint lines, no bleeding anywhere. Especially on the kimono, I, wasn't exp I was a little um, not apprehensive about it, but I was wondering if there would be some of the lighter green spilling over and it, there really isn't. Uh, the dark green and light green are separated nicely so that looks really really good. Uh, the portrait here, the geisha style, you got the white makeup but there's a little a little subtle element of flesh tones below that. Uh, it's very very cool effect there. Uh, the eyeshadow, the eyeliner, she's got this pink eyeliner that kind of comes up over the sides of her eyes very very cool look uh, the nice red hair uh, and then you got the other portrait here which i'll show you on the body uh, in a bit but this one's got uh, you can see the hair color is a little bit different there uh, this one's got more of a almost like a fluorescent pink look to it but the the makeup on this portrait looks fantastic uh, you know she's got the the blush on her cheeks uh, the green eyeshadow, uh, the pink eyeliner below, uh, her eyebrows look really nice uh, above, above her eyes and they kind of go up under her bangs there. So I mean two fantastic portraits. Um, I w I, before this thing uh, arrived and before I had it in hand, I mean it was definitely going to be this one here, the geisha portrait. For me, probably still will be, but this one's got me thinking twice now that I see it in hand. Uh, again, and it's very, very nice. So paint-wise, you know, the base, uh, not quite as good as the original that they showed at, at Singapore Comic Con last year, but still very, very good. And Poison Ivy herself is, is top-end paint job there. Nothing to complain about at all. So production and build quality on this statue. Uh, I'm not going to take the whole thing apart for you. Um, Let's just say it's a bit of a pain in the butt to put together. It's got a lot of pieces. Basically, all, everything here, all the flowers and the, and the snap drags and everything, it's all separate pieces and you got to put it all together. There is a assembly guide 
in the box. It's got step-by-step uh, -step instructions how to put it together. Use it, follow it. Uh, there is a specific order you have to do things to get it in. Um, so definitely pay attention to that as you're assembling her. Um, so eventually you're going to get to this. Uh, it does take a while. There's um, almost 30 pieces in the box. Um, I was down on my knees trying to you know, slot in the, the, the branches and things and find the holes on the underside of the, the branches to get pieces in. And uh, In case you're wondering, they did actually paint on her underwear. As I was putting it together, uh, you know, you did catch a glimpse. I know that makes me sound like a total perv, but it was by accident because this piece does take a little bit of time, as I said. Uh, one thing I'll point out about the geisha portrait, uh, the hairpins, they are a little bit loose uh, on mine and, and I know on other people's as well. Uh, there's a few tricks you can use to make them help uh, stay in a little bit better. Uh, some people are using some clear nail polish, so you just paint that on, let it dry, and that kind of thickens the end a bit, just enough to help them stay. You could use sticky tack, like that stuff um, used to hang your posters on your wall, just a tiny, tiny little bit of that, and that'll help it stay as well. So a little bit of work um you know to get those to stay maybe um one thing i'll point out about this portrait uh it's got these little strands of hair kind of coming off her bangs and off the sides of her head be careful not to snap those off be careful where you're grabbing this portrait as you're pulling it out of the box uh, same thing with her body these she's got some loose vines that come sort of pre-attached okay so when you're pulling her out of the out of the box be careful you don't grab in the wrong spot and, and snap one of those vines. So uh, eventually you're going to get to this point here and it becomes kind of straightforward from there. So uh, we'll drop her head into place. You can see there's a metal peg there and you just kind of drop that in uh, nice and easy like that. Uh, the hands are with magnets and so they just kind of slot into um, her kimono like that. And this is kind of a neat look, this uh, kind of half mask here. Once you sort of get that into place, um, when, when at the, just at the right angle, you get can kind of see uh, the mask. It covers exactly half of her face, so it's, uh, it's a really neat effect there. And then finally, you got the umbrella. Uh, it is a wooden umbrella, so there's wood elements there, kind of a, a fabric. Um, uh, right there and it does actually move up and down it is like a, a little mini umbrella so it will kind of click open and stay open for you there and it just kind of rests in her hand over her shoulder like that and here we go so there you have it that's the alternate setup for you and in theory, you can mix and match both our sets of arms with both heads. I know um, some people, the umbrella doesn't quite fit with the geisha head. Uh, mine opens really quite wide, so uh, I do have enough room. But for others, I know that the umbrella itself uh, kind of rubs on the back of the head. So just be careful that you don't scratch the paint. Um, so once it's all together, it's a very nice sturdy piece. Um, it's got a nice weight to it. It's a little bit of a smaller piece, uh, more compact, so it's, it's going to be nice and easy for you to display. Uh, inside the box you do get a nice art print. Uh, this one's actually really nice. I like the colors they used on it. It would look great with the statue if uh, you're able to display it alongside. Um, but overall, I mean, you know, you got the bomb-proof packaging that you, t you expect from XM Studios and just fantastic piece. It, 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 you know, it, as I said, it takes some time to put together, but once it's assembled, it's just a, a really nice quality feel, quality looking piece. Okay, so before we wrap up the review here, you can see on mine, the umbrella does fit with the geisha head. Um, but as I mentioned, the umbrella, um, this particular one opens up really flat and wide. Um, so it might vary depending on, you know, piece to piece, whether that's going to work for you. Um, but overall, uh, Poison Ivy from the Samurai Batman line from XM Studios, I think it's one of their most ambitious, most creative pieces that they put out to date. Um, I mean, look at this thing. It's so intricate. Um, I don't know how they engineered this thing to arrive in one or unbroken. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. I love 
the Japanese elements on this statue. Uh, Rising Star did a nice write-up review over at Statue Forum and also at beemother.com, uh, kind of walking through the history of a geisha and what they mean to Japanese culture. So if you want to read up on that, you can. Uh, but overall, uh, as I mentioned, just a fantastic piece from XM. It's one of the most creative that I've seen. I, I love it. I think it turned out great. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Uh, we're going to have lots more coming this year. We're going to have a couple reviews from Figurama. We're going to have uh, some, some more um, XM. We're going to have some Sideshow, some Tweeterhead, uh, maybe get some Sume pieces finally to review. So, um, you know, lots coming up on the channel. Uh, hopefully you guys stay tuned and we'll talk to you guys later. Yeah.